Hi, I'm Mike. In this short video, I want to take you on a quick tour of the Calgary Trend House. Now, the house was one of 11 built across Canada in the early 50s, designed to promote the use of BC wood products. And in this case, this house was designed by Peter Rule from the firm Rule Win Rule, which was a very influential architectural practice here in the province of Alberta. Now, from the outside of the house, it doesn't really look that remarkable. Although, if you take a closer look, you can see some iconic mid-century modern design elements. For example, clear story windows over here. We've got large windows that go all the way up to the ceiling. There's a recessed entryway behind me. And over here, you've got this massive brick that starts on the inside and works its way into the middle of the house. Now, the roof is actually one of the most interesting features because it actually hides a couple of secrets that you can't see until you are actually inside the house. So why don't we go take a look? So as you enter the house, the first thing that you notice is this dramatic wooden ceiling. And because of the slope, it gives you an almost double height effect in the back of the house. And you notice that it also continues on and there's an entirely new section of house that you can't see from the front. So the house was designed in the shape of an upside down T with the front part of the house containing all of the public spaces living room, dining room, kitchen, etc. And then the back part of the house containing all the private spaces, bedrooms, bathrooms, utilities. And then the two are connected by a staircase that's glassed in, um, which helps separate the two. So we'll just do a quick tour of this public part of the house and uh, why don't we start with the living room. Here in the Trend House living room, you can really see all of the different materials that Western Woods was trying to promote. So the wall and the ceiling are all red cedar, these big beams, and all of the casework in the house is done as fir. And although you can't tell to look at it, all of the walls in the Trend House are actually three-quarter inch plywood handled from Douglas fir. Now Peter Rule, the architect, also did something unusual in this public part of the house, and that is he flipped around all of the rooms in terms of what you'd normally expect from a 1953's bungalow. So in this case here, in the living room, normally you would have a large picture window that faced out onto the street, which is great for light, not so good for privacy. So what he did was, on the street side, he put these clear story windows, letting in light, giving you lots of privacy, and then opened up the entire back wall, which looks into your garden. So no worries about privacy there. So let's uh, take a look at the east wall here in the living room. So here on the east side of the living room, uh, you can see this brick structure which starts here inside and continues all the way to the outside of the building, which is very iconic in century modern. It also houses a, the fireplace as well as some display notes. But the really interesting thing about this is the material, these bricks. So this is Claybank brick, which is from Claybank, Saskatchewan, which is a national historic site. And the material that they used to make the bricks gave it not only a unique look, um, speckled look, but also unique thermal properties. So as a result, it was used in a lot of industrial applications like lining blast furnaces, etc. But the really cool story is that this brick was also used to line the launch pads at Cape Canaveral for the Apollo space program. Another iconic mid-century modern design feature are built-ins. The Trend House has a number of them, and this is the biggest one, and it acts as a room divider. It's got a planter built into it. It's a sideboard for the dining room as well as providing lighting for that part of the house. And it helps to tie together every the space from the living room all the way back to the kitchen. The dining room in a typical 50s bungalow was usually tucked in the back next to the kitchen. But here in the Trend House, it's front and center. It's got these huge windows that go all the way up to the ceiling, which is the same ceiling that continues from the living room. And it's got access through this pass-through to the kitchen. Here in the Trent House kitchen, as well as the rest of the Trent House, the design and layout of the elements hasn't changed since uh, the house was built. So here again, Peter will flip things around. Yeah, typically in a 50s bungalow, the kitchen sink would be at the back of the house facing out into the yard. Here it's at the front of the house and looks out onto the street. So when you're making dinner or washing up dishes, you get a real good sense of what's going on around you. You can say hi to the neighbors, that kind of thing. There's still two large windows on the other side, so you can look into the uh, backyard, but it's just another example of how, what made this house unique back in 1954. So the Trend House was completed in April of 1954 and then was open to the public for four months. And it's estimated that over 30,000 Calgarians came through the house. 
It's particularly impressive considering the population at the time was just a little over 165,000. In fact, there are a couple of stories that said the Calgary police had to come out on occasion to make sure that enthusiastic visitors made it out of the house by the nine o'clock closing time. What I really love about the Trend House program is that it was so much more than a promotional tool for particular materials. Uh, it was a way for Canadian companies to showcase their innovative new ideas and technologies that they were hoping to bring into the retail market. So for example, General Electric Canada had a heating system that had monitors on the outside that worked together with the thermostat to ensure a steady climate inside the house no matter what was happening with the weather. And the really cool thing was the electrical system was controlled not by mechanical switches like we have today, but by a low voltage electrical system, which meant there were a couple places in the house that had special panels with a dial and a switch. And depending on which number the dial was set to, when you hit the switch, you could turn on or off any outlet or appliance in the house. So for example, from the master bedroom, you could turn on the outside lights or you could turn on the coffee maker in the kitchen. It was the wired house 60 years ago. The Eaton's company was also involved in the Trend House program, decorating each of the houses. They worked together with the Design Index out of the National Gallery in Ottawa and selected the very best Canadian design and manufactured furnishings, accessories, fixtures, textiles, etc. So in the end, the tech Trend House program was a real celebration of Canadian materials, innovation, and design, uh, the likes of which we probably didn't see again until maybe Expo 67. There are a handful of trend houses still intact, uh, notably in Victoria, Vancouver, Winnipeg, and in Toronto, uh, but a number of them have been lost, uh, most recently the one in Montreal, which despite a number of last minute efforts to protect and save, uh, couldn't escape the bulldozers a few years ago. Uh, so we were really pleased in January 2015 when the City of Calgary designated the Calgary Trend House as the very first uh, mid-century modern structure to receive municipal protection. So thanks for watching. Uh, if you have any questions, please feel free to get in touch. Uh, I'm really excited about the project that you're doing and uh, if there's a place in it for the Trend House, we would love to help out. Thanks very much. Thank you.